It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the South region. This is Fox Sports Outdoor South. Hi everybody, welcome to the show. Of all the lakes, reservoirs, in our South and Southwest regions, I don't know of one that's taken such a beating, endured so many hardships, but yet come back with such flying colors as the lake right behind me. This is Possum Kingdom Lake, located in Northwest Texas, north of the City of Mineral Wells. Now, we're doing something on this week's show that we rarely do. We've actually already been out fishing. It's afternoon right now and we're finished. What we're gonna do is do a little flashback and take you back to very early this morning. In fact, right after daylight. Why? Because the striper fishing has made the best comeback of all. In particular, over the last two years, there's one fishing guide that's really been on these stripers really strong. His name is Micah Costa. He guides for stripers, hybrids, and white bass at many lakes across North Texas, but particularly here at Possum Kingdom. And he's been a great friend of our show for many years. So this morning, we went out and met up with Micah Costa and his neighbor and friend, Tim, who was in the boat with him, and they caught a few stripers. We're gonna milk Mike for some good information that may help you if you'd like to plan your very own fishing trip here to Possum Kingdom and catch some really good sized striped bass. It's gonna be a lot of fun and while we're doing that, lucky you, you get to go around your local region for your fishing lake, river, bay reports from our expert team of insider reporters. It's all coming up in the next action-packed half hour and it all gets started right now back at the FSN studios with your weekend plan. If you can avoid the crowds, Labor Day looks to be the best chance to catch fish over the holiday weekend. Both Saturday and Sunday are predicted to have poor conditions, while Monday is listed as good, with the best action starting a few hours before sunrise and again at 4.35 in the afternoon. Look for the sun to rise at 7.01 and set at 7.54, and evenings will feature a crescent moon that is 23% illuminated. Stay with us, we're coming right back with fresh water and coastal fishing updates from around the region. Plus, I'll return with Bassmaster Elite Angler Ott Defoe to answer one of your questions on this week's Ask the Pro. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. By Lou's, setting a new standard in fishing performance. Feel the difference. By Strike King Lures, number one in fishing. And by Lowrance Electronics, find, navigate, dominate. Hey everybody, we've made it back out onto the lake at Possum Kingdom early, early in the morning here. We're with guide Mike Acosta, who guides on several different lakes up and down the Brazos River system. We're down by the dam right now doing some striper fishing with live bait. And as you can see, Mike has already got a fish on. He's with his neighbor, Tim, and uh, Tim's actually reeling this first fish up. Let's see what we got. Summertime is great. Early morning, you don't want to miss the morning bite, in my opinion. And so you normally get here literally at or before daylight? Right at daylight, 6.30ish right now, the sun up comes up. So we're right here. And you'll actually find these fish biting in almost dark conditions? Almost dark conditions early. Yeah, and they may bite at night too, but I'm usually not here during the night. But now, How late into the day can you, can you get the fish to bite? Well, depending, depending on the... Uh, the weather, looks like we got a good seven, eight pound fish here. All right, good fish right there. Got another fish on right here, Tim, get after it. Wow, you got two at once, doubles. Look at there, that's a healthy fish, at nine pounds probably at least. Wow. So we got doubles right off the bat here. And Mike, you're fishing live bait on these fish, right? Right, All live shad, bait. live gizzard shad, though thread fins will work. And uh, summertime, you can also catch them down rigging. And, uh, but live bait is a, uh, pretty much a great choice this time of year. These fish are running from about five to 12 pounds, an occasional 16 pounders being caught. And uh, we got a little mess here, I'm trying to get. So that fish is about a what, a four or five pound or something like that? Yeah, this is five, six pounds right there. 
All right, well, we've got a great start out here. Sun's not even up yet, so let's see what's gonna happen. But there's two fish for you right off the bat early in the morning, just like we said, got a good start to the day. Let's get you started with some fishing and lake reports from your local region, from our team of insider reporters. Let's start off in Tennessee and Kentucky with our reporter, Kristen Powell. Hey gang, welcome to this week's Tennessee and Kentucky Fishing Report. You know, it's August, it is summertime. The fishing is what you might expect in late August. It's not just fast and furious, but you know what? We're blessed to live in a region where it's still not that bad. Bass fishing throughout the region is still pretty good by all accounts. Um, fish vegetation, right now, is the, that's the key. Grass equals oxygen, oxygen equals bait fish, and bait fish equals bass. Um, Topwater baits, soft plastic baits that you can fish through the grass, uh, crank baits around the edge of the grass, always spinner baits are a must, swim baits and swim jigs. Uh, that, that arsenal should give you pretty much whatever you need to pluck those bass out of the grass. Just grass on the main lake is a plus. Anywhere where you have some current that, that touches that grass, that's where they should be. Catfish, Cumberland River. Uh, guys, I, I've got a, a buddy of mine that's been going over there. He's fishing main river bars where the actual river channel swings up against a bar and it creates a little bit of a current situation there. He's fishing cut bait and he's caught some really big stringers and some really big fish. So catfish are still a very viable option this time of year. East Tennessee, Chickamauga on fire. That lake's been great the past couple years and this summer has not proved to be any different. And I have one sleeper for you in Eastern Kentucky. Heard a report about the bass fishing on Taylorsville Lake. And I hope I'm not letting the cat out of the bag on a local secret, but supposedly that place is on fire, been on fire and just nobody's talking about it. So in Eastern Kentucky, Taylorsville Lake. Aside from that, Real Foot Lake on this, if you guys recall, a couple weeks ago we had this super moon, this phenomenon where we had this mega full moon. That just did wonders for the uh, bluegill. Those guys jumped back up shallow, got around the uh, lily pad stems and the shallow stumps and cypress trees and just started the whole bedding process all over again just like it was spring. And guys, there's plenty of that cover on the lake, so all you gotta do is get you a float, a cricket, get out there and get after them. Guys, bear with me, let's stick through summer, fall's on the horizon. We'll see you on the water in Tennessee and Kentucky. Hey, welcome back everybody. We're on Possum Kingdom Lake today. Glad to have you along with us. The sun has come up, it's early in the morning. Doing a little striper fishing for you on this week's show, talking about the comeback of Possum Kingdom after terrible fish kills back in the early 2000s. We're out here side by side with uh, our guide friend, Mike Acosta, who runs a guide service for whites and stripers and hybrids on several lakes in North Texas. In fact, he's out here with his neighbor, Tim. Hey, Mike, while he's reeling that fish in, talk a little bit about the, the fishery here and what's happened over the last few years. Uh, since uh, 2001, we've had golden algae blooms on the Brazos and uh, affected the fisheries. In fact, wiped the fishery out several times. Uh, right now, the we haven't had a serious bloom in the last few years, and the fishing is coming back. So by coming back, Mike, what do you mean by that? What, what's an average day like for you now? Well, right now, the, uh, the actually the big fish, there's a few remaining big fish, as you can see, decent sized fish that weren't killed in the last bloom, and they are good to about 16 pounds uh, on many days. So I'm trying to focus on catching some of these bigger fish, but there are huge schools of 15 to 17 inch fish. And in a matter of a few months, we will have a lot of 18 inch keeper fish here on, on uh, Possum wow. Kingdom. Now hold that fish up, show us that fish. How, how big do you think that fish will go? Six, seven pounds maybe. And is that kind of average for what you've been catching? Between six and 10 pounds, I'd say so, yes. Wow, awesome. Well, we've got a good start talking a little bit about the past of Possum Kingdom and the hopeful future for the fishery here. Hey, let's get you some more local fishing and lake reports. Let's start off in Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia with your freshwater report and Jimmy Jacobs, followed up by Bob McNally, those same states, your saltwater report. Welcome to Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi freshwater fishing report. This week's action is sponsored by scenic coastal Georgia's Liberty County, the perfect spot for hunting, fishing, and outdoor recreation. Two hunting preserves, two marinas, and public fishing piers offer hunting and fishing trips or outdoor adventures. Escape the ordinary in Liberty County, the right blend, www.libertycounty.org. Now we've reached the end of August, but the summer catfish action continues to be hot. 
In Mississippi, head over to Ross Barnett Reservoir on the Pearl River near Jackson. The channel catfish are biting. You want to target these fish in 10 to 12 feet of water up on the flats, but you need deep water to be close by. And if the old river channel bends in close, that's even better. Simple tactics will work for these fish. You want to use worms, cut bait, dough balls, but whatever bait you use, it needs to have odor to attract the fish. In Georgia, you can get a double dose of catfish action on High Falls Lake in the midsection of the state. This 650-acre state park impoundment on the Tawaliga River is full of 14-inch channel catfish. But you've also got a shot at a 20-pound flathead on this lake. Best tactic is drift fishing on the lower end of the lake. You want to hit those deep holes or the bends in the old river channel. And as far as baits go, for the flatheads, a live brim. For the channel cats, go down on the bottom with cut bait. If you're looking for bass action this week, try Bear Creek Reservoir in northwest Alabama. Back in 2009, more than a quarter million largemouth bass of the Florida strain were stocked in this lake. And those fish are now in the four to six pound range. There's a lot of timber and brush in the impoundment and it's very fertile water. Because of that, the oxygen levels get quite low in the summertime and this pushes all of the fish up to the top eight feet of water just below the surface and makes them easily breached. This part of the program is brought to you by Egret Baits, makers of the new Voodoo Mullet. Voodoo Mullet has really remarkable fishing action and it comes in two sizes to match the hatch wherever you're fishing. So give a Voodoo Mullet a try and the fish will do the rest. This week, Savannah, Georgia has really been on fire for fishing. They've been catching triple tail off Osaba Sound in pretty good numbers and they're big fish. Captain Ray Golden and his wife Amy had five fish. The two biggest went 24 and 15 pounds. Those are a huge triple tail and the fishing there has been really good for them. Also, Kobe have been caught around Tybee Island buoys and channel markers. Spanish mackerel also have been caught around Tybee Island for those trolling spoons. Clark spoons, the silver ones, the small ones are very good. There's plenty of sharks around Wausau Sound and there's tarpon all down along the Peach State Coast from Savannah to Golden Isles. They're even going to have a first time uh, tarpon tournament out of Savannah. So the tarpon fishing has really been good and it will, should get better through this month and into September too. Over in Mississippi, my good friend Bayboat Steve Herbison said the trout fishing has been pretty good around past Christian for three to five pound fish, but they're deep. You got to use live shrimp, take your time, but you will catch some fish. Ivan Strahan in Biloxi tells me there's been almost no rain in that part of the coast recently, and that's brought that saline content way high. That's made for really good fishing from big Jack Crevalli to giant redfish. There's lots of white trout and plenty of ground mullet. In Alabama, the trout fishing continues to improve. Again, it's the lower part of the bay. Early and late is your best time. And those trout are going up to about four pounds now. And again, live shrimp deep. Well, that's it for the Coastal Fishing Report. Remember, next time you're on the water, please take a youngster with you. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. By Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. By Motor Guide. Trolling motors engineered for anglers. And by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Welcome to the big leagues. Hey, welcome back everybody. Fox Sports Outdoors today on Possum Kingdom Lake. We started off the day, as you well saw, catching striped bass with uh, Mike Acosta. And right now, man, there's some big blow ups in there. Look at that big white bass, will you? Big dude. We've gone to white bass fishing, and that is a monster right there. And he spit up a shad, shows you what they're feeding on. I was just driving down the lake, and look at that. I looked over, Let me. I'll tell you in just a second what these fish are doing. Here is what they're feeding on. I'll put that in my hand, and look at that. That is a little thread fin shad right there. And that's what they're eating, and then this is what I'm throwing, a spoon and it looks just like a thread fin. That's a big white right there, man. Right here in front, I can catch another one while I'm talking, but look back here behind me. See all these bluff cliffs back here? These white bass have got the shad pinned back up against all these rocks right here. And they're just thrashing and feeding on. There's another one right there. That's gonna be another big one, I think. Let's see. We'll catch one more for you right here. I could probably sit here and catch a whole bunch of them. That's just a little white, a little uh, striper right there. The striped bass fishery, just like Mike told us, 
earlier is coming back big time and there's thousands and thousands of these little 14, 15 inch striped bass in here. Give them another couple of years and the striped bass fishery is gonna be fantastic here at PK. That's one thing you wanna watch for in the summertime is watch for shad pushed up against these bluffs. And there's, man, they're just hitting it every time I throw it in there right now. But they're uh, pushing them up against all these big rocks and the shad have got nowhere to go, nowhere to run. And the fish have just got them pinned up against there and feeding on them like crazy. And that's just another little striper. All right, well, we're gonna get you some more fishing reports right now, but we've got something working here. A lot of fun. Wanna bring a kid out and do this. This is a fantastic thing to do. Let's get you some more fishing and lake reports right now. Let's go to the Carolinas, north and south, fresh and salt water with English Glove. Hey folks, Captain E here with your Carolinas report this week. Brought to you by Marshalls Marine, located in Lake City in Georgetown, South Carolina. For all your nitro and bass tracker needs, visit www.marshallsmarine.com. And this week I want to share an incredible freshwater fishery that we have here in South Carolina. The smallmouth bass fishery in the Broad River between the Parr Reservoir and the City of Columbia is incredible. A good friend of mine, Captain Chris Denny, recently did a float down trip with his sons Jackson and Cooper and had an incredible day tossing rooster tails, three inch curly tail grubs on quarter ounce jigs in these highly oxygenated pools that are full of smallmouth bass, also some largemouth and some panfish. A kayak or canoe is perfect to get up there and cover that 25 miles of river from the Parr Reservoir down to Columbia. This is a fishery that the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources tried as an experiment to see how these fish would do, and they are thriving. Also, on the saltwater side of things, the inshore fisheries still continue to be good. Great flounder catches, redfish, and speckled trout are being reported. Also, along the beaches right now from Charleston up to Wrightsville, the Spanish mackerel fishery along the beaches is great. And offshore on those live bottoms and artificial reefs, you can find your larger Spanish mackerel mixed in with some incredible king mackerel. Talking about king mackerel, Ocean Crest Pier still continues to report some great catches of king mackerel right off of the pier there. And the blue water side of things, we're starting to hear some incredible wahoo bite as the fall starts to warm up and we'll see some bites continue with the black fin tuna starting to make their move right back into that same water. This has been your Carolina's Report this week. Remember, work smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day by Mercury Marine, celebrating 75 years of marine excellence, by Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability, and by Tracker Boats. It's more than just a boat, it's a tracker. Welcome back everyone. It's time for one of your questions to be answered by a fishing professional on the Whataburger Ask the Pro. This week, Darren wants to know, do you fizz a fish caught from deep water? And if so, how is it done? For the answer, we checked with professional angler Ott Defoe. Whenever you're fishing for deep bass, something that happens is that those fish will get a lot of air in their swim bladders. And a lot of people like to fizz them. I actually use a technique where you clip lead weight to the fish's fins on its belly to just basically offset what the air is doing. I use a flip clip is what it's called. Just clip it onto their fins and it'll just offset that weight. The bigger the fish is, the more lead it usually takes. But it works for fish caught up to 30 or 40 feet deep. Extremely deep fish, I, I have to fizz them along with using those clips. But for moderately deep fish, those clips are a lot easier and a lot faster and a lot safer for me to use. Thank you, Ott. If you would like one of our pros to answer your question, just visit our website, click on the Ask the Pro link, and send us your information. Now let's see who wins a pair of brand new sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. This week's winner in the Costa Catch of the Week contest is Greg Stanfield of St. Simons Island, Georgia, showing off a nine pound flounder he caught right off the St. Simons Island Pier. And of course, St. Simons Island just off Brunswick, Georgia. Each week, our winner wins a free pair of Costa sunglasses of their choosing. If you'd like to be the next winner, go straight to our website, foxsportsoutdoors.com, and on the right-hand side of the front page, click in the Costa Catch of the Week box, follow the instructions to send us your big fish photo, and you could be our next winner. And if you'd like to see all of the Costa frame and lens styles, you can see those by going to the front page of our website, again, foxsportsoutdoors.com, clicking on the Costa logo. You can see all the frame and lens styles, including 
frame style I was wearing on this week's episode called Switchfoot. Next up on the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, it's the right gear and the right setup to catch these stripers like you saw Mike Acosta and his friend catching on this week's episode. And it begins by sliding about a one and a half ounce lead egg sinker up on your main line. Then you tie a barrel swivel on your line. Then you tie leader material. I like Strand Fluorocast in about 15 or 17 pound, 14 or 17 pound. Then you put about an inch and a half long bait hook on there. Then we find a nice, lively shad. This one's about five or six inches long, which is perfect. Stick it in his mouth, hook it through the cartilage in his nose. That is like cotton candy to a striped bass. There is a school of thought that's very prevalent in our country today, and it's called moral relativism. Now, those are just big, fancy words. All it means is that there's no absolute standard for right and wrong that what's right or what's wrong for any individual is determined by his own set of circumstances, where he lives, his background, his upbringing. Basically, it just means that everybody gets to determine for themselves what right and wrong is. I come from the exact opposite school of thought. I believe that there is an absolute standard for right and wrong that applies to all people, all places, all times, everywhere. My personal standards for right and wrong are dictated by my faith in God, but the great news is that you get to choose what you believe. Hey, I hope you enjoyed our trip today to Possum Kingdom Lake in Northwest Texas, fishing for stripers and white bass. We got to watch Mike Acosta and his friend Tim catch some really nice stripers from about six to about nine pounds. Those fish are being caught somewhere from Neely Slough down to about the dam. That's the general area that most of these stripers are being caught in. Here's a quick picture. Some of those stripers but again there's some good quality stripers not a whole lot of them but great fighting if you'd like to book your own trip with mike to come catch some of these either here at possum kingdom or at whitney and he actually guides on lake granbury and lake bridgeport benbrook several other lakes around the north texas area for white bass hybrid stripers and striped bass you're looking at his contact information on the screen you can give him a call and book your very own guide trip it's a lot of fun don't forget to join us for next week's episode. We'll be on Thursday at 6 p.m. with the repeat airing Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. And if those times ever change, you'll be the first to know right on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. You can also see the latest episode of our show 24-7 right on that front page. And then new this season, right below that, you can click on more episodes and video here. You click in that box. Once you do that, it takes you to a page where we've got all the video stored, all of our past episodes for both the Southeast and Southwest versions of our show from the entire season. We've got last season's episodes, lots of how-to videos, stuff that matters, just a whole bunch of great videos right there in one spot on our website, one central location at foxsportsoutdoors.com. From Possum Kingdom Lake, until next week, I'm Barry Stokes saying be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.